I did his Ferrari in a custom orange chrome and I had just got it done that day. And Dolph hit me like, yo, I gotta go do this show, blah, blah, blah. Like, I really wanna take the car. I'm like, man, I just got it done. Like, leave it with me this weekend. Like, <laughs> please take, you know, take something else. And, um, and thank God they did. That was when, uh, when when it got shot at a hundred times so that was oh, wow. right before he did bulletproof and um if he would have been in the rari we would have lost off a long time ago uh, his initial plan was to go to the show in the ferrari leave in the ferrari um thank god he was in the bulletproof tahoe and we laughed about it afterwards like you know glad i did yeah. <laughs> glad i didn't give you the car yeah your yeah. own car yeah. um but <laughs> Justin, how you doing, brother? What's going on, guys? How are you? Doing awesome, great, awesome, man. awesome. Welcome to the shop. <laughs> oh, thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy, both personally and in business. Okay, okay. And uh, what what occurred in your life to make you uh, feel the way you feel? What do you mean? Because I'm pretty. You know, everybody have the ups and downs. Yeah, man, I, you know, uh, I think to say that we don't have ups and downs is a lie. Yeah. Um, we all go through that. Like, um, I think we all deal with, with uh, different struggles, different things. Yeah. And um, personally, I'm just, uh, thankfully right now, at least I'm at a point in my life where um, I've minimized stress and quality of life is more than money mm -hmm. um so i've just found a happy medium for the most part um but yeah you know we we all go through it um i think no matter what level you're on it it changes too mm -hmm. you know so um in the beginning the struggle was trying to get to the top mm -hmm. um yeah. and and then you realize when you get to the top you're just a big target <laughs> um, so, so staying there is a different challenge and then, um, and then self gratification and, and accomplishment. Um, you know, I'd say over the past year to maybe two years, I've been at a point where like, um, uh, I felt like I just kind of hit a, you feel stagnant a little bit, like, you know, like I made it, um, I'm at the top of my industry and um, and I've accomplished so many of the goals that I set forth. I really had to kind of sit back and, and reevaluate myself mm -hmm. and say, what are my new goals? And um, without having goals and things to strive for, I think you can be, you can find yourself lost at times. Um, so, or lose that drive. Right. So how did you balance the work in, in uh in family like how how, how, how? <laughs> i made the family come to work <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> it, it's hard man i um we actually had this discussion in the shop the other day um you know the first five years of business or so um there were there was no time for outside interference yep. um and and uh and one thing you know one of my biggest regrets in life um is is the time lost with my son mm -hmm. so um and mainly because of the shop and, and it's a catch-22 because um he he honestly inspired me to want to be where i am now mm -hmm. um i wanted to be that role model and set that example and and show that Can I ask you, how that old work is your He's 18. Okay. Yeah, he's 18. So, um, so I wanted to be that role model for him at the same time to build this business and and to get to the level that I wanted it to be at meant working late nights, giving up weekends, you know, and, and there were times uh, that maybe him and I even had plans and I have an artist or an athlete call that wants it right now. And it, um, so there was a lot of weekends and a lot of nights and things that were given up mm -hmm. um, and family time so that the business could be successful. On the yep. flip side of that, now I'm in a position where 
I can do anything I want. Yep. Um, I can go where I want and do what I want when I want to do it. Um, and and so, yeah. so you, you got to give a little to to get what you want. Absolutely. Nothing. Um, I'm not a lottery winner, so uh, <laughs> and I, I'm not the most educated person in the world. So, um, so I, a nine to five wasn't going to work for me. And um, but my goals and ambitions are that of a lottery winner. Absolutely. So, um, so I made this my lottery ticket. Yep. Okay. Let me ask you, hold on, I'm sorry, Travis. Okay. What makes you happy? There's, I mean. Like, say you have like a bad Adrenaline. Day. <laughs> if you have a bad day, what, do you, what is your go-to to change your mood? My car, like without question. I, I'm, um, you know, some people, some people like to go to the bar and have a drink. Some people like to go have a smoke or whatever. Um, I am 100% addicted to adrenaline. So <laughs> adrenaline's my drug. And, and honestly, if I could get it in like a pill or, or something, you know, that I could smoke or whatever, that'd be great, but, um, but I can't. So, um, so cars tend to be the easiest way for me to catch that adrenaline. And I get a, I get asked a lot, like, do I really daily my McLaren and and this and that? And the, the answer to it is yes. Um, how how many miles you got on it? So I'll hit fifty thousand this weekend. <laughs> That's um, crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I've had the car That's since crazy. it was brand new. Um, but but you know that there's a lot more to that car and why I daily it than most people think. So. Some people may see that as like, oh, he's trying to flex or um, or he does it for attention. And it, it's quite the opposite. I, um, I really don't want to talk to people um, <laughs> when I'm out. And uh, and I, I you know, it I, I love interacting with fans. But my point to all of that was like. When I wake up in the morning, I go out, I get in my car and I'm driving to work in my favorite car, um, it makes me feel some type of way. And no matter how bad my day is here, um, when I get in that car and I go home, like I'm in my dream car. I'm in, I'm in this McLaren that's, that's built the way I want it to be built. And, um, and it, you know, I think we need that reward as, as humans, like on no matter what level we're on, if you put in the work during the day or you deal with struggles throughout the day, you need that release, that relief, that, mm -hmm. uh, that gratification of, all right, I just went through some shit, but mm -hmm. this is why I went through that shit. Not like, either. I'm okay with it. If this, every day I get a reward and my reward is getting in that car. So, it's um, a great so yeah. what is one mistake, what's one mistake that you made in business that you learned from Trusting people. Okay. Trust no one. Okay. And why right. do you say that? Uh, I mean, we've just been burned so many times, man. Um, like, like so many times. What's the biggest one? You'd be like, okay, I can't do that again. It, it's, it's the trust, man. Okay. And, and we battle it now. Um, you know, one of the hardest things is if it were just one time or one person, it would be one thing, um, but that's, that hasn't been the case for us. So, um, and it's not a, um, the, the, the betrayals that I've dealt with have been long-term. Mm -hmm. So it's people that have been with me for years um, and then get caught still in, you know, going through customer books after hours, um, calling people, telling them they'll do it cheaper or, you know, um, right. No, absolutely. But that's happened several times. Uh, so we've got to a point where, especially from a sales perspective, like, uh, we guard our client list so mm -hmm. much. Um, and we know people call around and price shop and, and there's nothing we can really do about that. But, um, but we're just always on guard. Yep. And, and I, I grew up, a very poor and rough lifestyle uh, at a young age. So I, I'm naturally a fighter. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I don't want to be. Yep. The older I get, the, the less I care about that. Mm -hmm. um, the younger me was, I was crack some skulls and go about our day, yep. you know. Um, the older I get, man, I just want to be happy mm -hmm. and chill and eliminate the shit. Um, so, it, so is your goal to eventually step completely away from the shop? Yes. Yeah, eventually it is. Um, now, and again, that's a catch-22 also. So um, I, I put a lot of thought into that, Travis, mm -hmm. like way, way more than you might think I do. Um, <laughs> but, um, and for me, and especially this business, it's, um, it, it's, it's unique in a perspective of it, it's, you can't just step away. Um, it takes trusting someone, it takes like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I've, got, I've got one of my guys, uh, Brian, that's my lead installer and uh, I love him well in my heart. Like that's ride or die, He's, that's my guy. He's been with me six years uh, going on seven and, um, and ultimately my goal is for him to have a very large stake of the company and run it. Yeah. Um, so he's the one that stuck with me and been loyal and, and been dedicated and um, and those people are hard to find. Like you that's feel like he needs more training to come up to that role. No, no, I really don't. He's um, he's done that. He's been with me every day for over six years and and knows those steps. Um, he say, like, of course okay. he is, um, <laughs> but you know, on the, the catch 22 side of it is, um, although ultimately, you know, the goal is always to build a company that, that will take care of you for a lifetime. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. at the same time, so I say that to say, you know, as a business owner, I look at it and I, I have option, I have two options in my opinion. Um, I can sell the company and catch a ride out check um, or have people made offers. Yeah. Yeah. We've had probably three or four offers to buy the company over the years. Something that that interests you. Yeah, on, on, it, was, it was pretty close okay. uh, a couple <laughs> times. You know? And there's there was one that, that I probably like even a couple times looked back and went, man, I wish I could. I wish I could take my answer back, you know. <laughs> um, but with all that being said, I didn't build this company uh, for the money. It, it wasn't, um, I tell people quite often, like, I don't do it for the money. And I think most people probably feel like I'm full of shit driving in a McLaren with a fleet of cars and bikes. Um, but I really didn't, man. Like, uh, even on my days off, I find myself here. So mm -hmm. like, if I wasn't here working, I'd probably be in the garage at my house with a friend tinkering on a car, doing something with cars and, and bikes. So, um, so I say all that to say, ideally or theoretically, yes, I'm excited for him to take over or, or that next step. Um, but ultimately, even if I wasn't working here, I, I think I'd still be here. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I built a business that, that, yes, it's a company. Yes, we have obligations and, and things like that. But ultimately, I really love this shop. Like, I love, these are the people I want to be around every day. And, and I enjoy interacting and seeing them grow and them reach their goals. And I enjoy helping them, and and they help me, and and ultimately, I, I um, personally, this this is the ultimate life for me, man. I I get to I get to put stickers on really expensive cars for celebrities and athletes <laughs> and cool people, and I get to do it with my friends. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we listen to the music we want, and we we do what we want. It, it's it's a fun. So, Fun environment for so the most part. I know you have a TV show. Yes. Would you go back to that if you left? Yes. That's what, that would be the next thing. I'll do that regardless. <laughs> That's already in the process. <laughs> um, 
So, so we we have signed on. Um, I'll be doing another racing series with the with the McLaren. Um, it starts. We start filming in June. Um, I love that side of it. There's not enough money in it for it to be, at least right now, uh, for it to be sustain sustainable for me. Um, but at the same time, I enjoy it. I don't mind being on camera. It doesn't doesn't really bother me. It, uh, it used to. I used to really feel uncomfortable on camera. And now I, I just don't care. Um, I think you get over that fear, and and YouTube probably helped a lot with that. Yeah. So, so um, I, I I've seen you made a post probably like a couple weeks ago. You said you couldn't get inside of your YouTube channel. What what's the situation with that? So that's, you know, I I, um, I can't say a whole lot about that. Um, just for legal issues, but um, but as you know, Dan and I uh, were great friends for about five years, mm -hmm. um, and and so uh, and honestly, I give him credit for getting me into YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I could care less about YouTube before him and I become friends. Um, he got me into it, did some stuff on his channel, helped me build my channel. Um, but it was parked on his platform mm, okay. uh, and, and tied to his accounts. Okay. Um, I got a sponsorship opportunity mm -hmm. and, um, and was actually gonna sell the channel and, and he wanted half of it all of a sudden. Um, mm. So because he helped me start it, um, mm. he felt like half the channel was his. What, and what did we, you feel like was an acceptable amount for him if you did? Um, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm, <laughs> we're your friend. but, but we're friends. Yeah. So at the, or you know, in in my view, at that time we we were best friends, or I considered him a best friend. Um, so when my friends call or need something, it's never about money to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't. I don't care. So, so you shouldn't have asked. So I say that to say, you know, like. He promoted our company, um, and and there he did do helpful things for me over the years. I, I can't won't take that away from him. Um, but the name of the channel was Rap Life. Like yeah. he has nothing to do with raps. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it it was clearly a channel for me yeah. that he cared nothing about until. Until there was, there was money involved. there was some something yeah something substantial involved, because um, it was always money and, but it wasn't. And then well yeah, um, so so that's it's is again another what I feel is a betrayal and I'm cool. sure he'll have a different opinion so, on it. Was he um, giving you the full check from your YouTube channel? No, I never got anything. So you he never was, made you never whoa, made no money whoa. from your YouTube channel? Not a dime. He did. See, no, but now, he didn't give now it to we me. can run it back, and I feel like you are completely right. He deserves nothing out of that, because not only was he not breaking you off on your, your YouTube channel, yeah. he was using it at the same time to boost his success. Correct. A couple of videos got over a million views. Uh, I, so, I, I think one of the videos when you was like during the car tour, it had, I think it had like 1.3 million or something like that. Yeah, so I added it up. It was over 13 million views that I was associated with or in. Mm -hmm. um, Altogether, not all on my channel. I'm saying on oh, his, okay. but things we would do, mm -hmm. you know, I take the cars out, do things for his channel that he would make money off of, and I never asked for anything. Wow! Uh, I did eight free raps for him that he never even paid for materials on. Now he promotes another rap company out of spite. Um, again, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm know, not expecting uh, you to say that. That's crazy. So, so there's just some things where. As a friend, um, and, and honestly, I had kind of, I kind of didn't care about the channel myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just have so many other things going on. I wasn't making anything off of it. Yeah. It, to me, it wasn't a big benefit. It's, it's more of I was doing it um, for our fans that wanted to see the stuff mm -hmm. it, it, and, and and whatever. So when I blew the the engine in the McLaren. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an opportunity to basically trade the channel for an engine. 
um, yeah. okay. and and kind of recoup that cost. So mm -hmm. I was out of pocket, over seventy thousand dollars cash at the time, and it was like, oh, I could just yeah. give you my ch give this person my channel, and yeah. they'll yeah. compensate me for my engine and. And I'm whole again. Yep. I wasn't even profiting. I would just be whole again. Yep. Uh, so for someone that I consider to be my best friend to want half of that. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm just trying to get back to like yeah. even here. Yeah. I'm not trying to come up. I'm just trying to get back to even. Um, and, and I blew the engine trying to secure a sponsorship for both of us, um, even though he wasn't there. So. And again, I'm sure he's yeah. got a different spin and we'll let the lawyers work that out. I am, I am fighting to get the channel back. I don't okay. care what no one says. Um, he was wrong for not paying you anything the whole time. So agreed. At that point, and we're talking about years. Yeah. So at that point, I don't care what you feel like you're owed. Cause yeah. you've been already taken from me. Not to mention there's other things and I've been that doing things for you eight wraps throughout the time. And I know how much you charge for wraps. Yo, Cause I know how much you charge for wraps. Well, and, and, and so again, you know, even when you reached out to me for, uh, to do a car show with XL city, mm -hmm. um, and you made me a very generous offer and, and I accepted. And the mm -hmm. first thing I did at no benefit to myself was say, Hey, you want to bring my other buddy in yeah. and and yeah. he made a substantial amount of money off off yeah. that but so i say that to say i think for it yeah. i just want to help my friends Absolutely. if it helps you and it helps him we all win yep. right See, like that's yeah. that's what that's what you're supposed to do that yeah. is cool that's moving, just right? doing the right thing yeah, absolutely. um uh but at a certain point you know um greed's a motherfucker man <laughs> Like, <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it. No. Um, it's things like that um, definitely affect how I interact with other people. Yep. In hindsight, um, do you see the greed? Did you see the greed in him? I do now. So, like so after, afterwards, and I like obviously evaluated our friendship. Yeah. Um, yes. Now, I don't know that I saw. I don't know, it's, it's weird. I, I don't wanna say, I've, I've always saw the greed side of him, um, but at the same time, I feel like I did more for him than he did for me. Mm -hmm. But again, when you're friends with someone, you don't keep score. Yeah, yeah. That's, so, I completely know So, uh, you know, for five years, like I didn't, I didn't keep I didn't keep a list like yeah. I did for you. You you owe yeah. me. Yeah. Well, fuck that. Like we're friends. I, it doesn't matter if you need me more than I need you, or we. You know, it may have been a year where I needed him more than he needed me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's why I said in the beginning of this, there's a lot he did for me mm -hmm. um, in promoting this company. Yeah. Um, that that I'm very grateful for. Um, even getting me into YouTube. Um, honestly, if our friendship wouldn't have evolved or developed the way it did i might have not have never did netflix um mm. i did netflix because i had been comfortable okay. doing things on his youtube channel mm -hmm. so when they asked me to do it i'm careless if you stick it, how big the camera is it's still a camera so <laughs> um so i felt pretty comfortable doing that and i i credit him for that yeah. um not trying to take anything away so um and again you know, he may not have the same things to say about me, but but I'm a pretty straight up yeah. person. I, I just say how it is. Um, so so that side of it sucks um, more so than any of the money. It just sucks to feel um, like like betrayal, mm -hmm. yeah. um, especially from someone that you feel that close to. So Absolutely. one of the biggest struggles in my life. Um, since I was a kid has been betrayal. Yeah. Um, it's, it's get helping people or letting people be close. And, and how was your childhood? Um, like growing, like, uh, let's say up until high school, like how was your family? Was anybody else entrepreneurish type? No, or? no. Um, my parents split when I was three. My dad, uh, is a mechanic always has been, um, 
one of my biggest role models and mentors, whether he knew it or not. Um, but but he's always been an inspiration. His work ethic, um, his morals, things like that. Um, but I didn't live with him my whole life. I, I primarily live with my mom, and at 16, I moved out on my own. Um, so uh, why did you out so early? I bought a motorcycle. I dropped out of high school in ninth grade. Um, I really only went to ninth grade to meet cool. meet the new chicks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I was going to meet some new girls and, and see what was up. Um, but uh, no, nah, man, I, I I just got a job. I got a job at 14. So at mm -hmm. 14, um, I would get off the school bus and I walked about two and a half miles each way to a Dairy Queen mm -hmm. and I worked and I just put money away and put money away. And then at 16, got a job uh, at a tire store, you know, uh, mountain and balancing tires and, and doing what teenagers do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I would just, I wasn't good at school. I wasn't good at, at authority mm -hmm. uh, or dealing with authorities. Yep. Um, so the whole fact that like, I got to ask you if I can get up and go take a piss. Yeah. We got a problem. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I didn't do good with school. And, uh, and anyways, I bought a motorcycle, came home. My mom, you know, you can't, if you're going to live in this house, you can't have a bike. And I'm like, cool story. I know some chick down the road with an apartment and I'm out, <laughs> you know, okay. so. So when was that transition to when you started like rapping cars? Oh God, what man. Did that? I didn't, uh, I didn't start rapping cars till I was 29, 30. Oh wow. And what, yeah. and what inspired you to do that? Or what made you do Street it? racing. Okay. Yeah, I, um, you know, I've, I've always been around uh, fast cars and bikes. It really started with bikes. So I raced AMA Superbike for a couple of years. Um, and we would go down to Atlanta and, and street race, like weekly. I mean, it was a hustle that that's how I made a living. Mm -hmm. um, What's the most amount of money you made from one street race? 50. 50,000? Yeah. What were you driving? A Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> who would you yeah. like? What, what, who, who's you racing? I like, can't what type tell of? You. Well, what can you say what type of car it was? The Camaro. Okay. Okay. It was a Mustang versus Camaro. Uh, it was down at Moreland Avenue in the hole. Was it like the stock Camaro or is it? No, of course no, the car wasn't stopped with fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm about to say, though, did you just these, take these were, money? These were trailer babies. They were brought down on trailers, okay. unloaded at the gas station, got, and driven a mile down the road. I got a question because you said you said something that caught me. You said you're not a fan of authority. Any street race at one point, you ever got in trouble with the law? Oh yeah, I've been in jail several times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always, never for anything other than driving or fighting. Those were the two things that, that put me in jail. So what do you go to jail for driving for? Oh, I can't tell you how many times I've got reckless driving. It's like, I went to jail, the shit, I went to jail because of Dan oh. uh, a couple of years ago. So I uh, did a video. We just, we were having fun, man. I had the Huracan at the mm -hmm. time, I think you remember, yep. wrapped in camo. So he hit me, like we were talking and and he he was needing some content you know and like man i don't know what to do and i'm like just come over we'll figure some shit out well like i pulled the doors off my lambo yeah. and somebody in the shop had like a domino's delivery thing you yeah. know the, yeah. this little suction cup so we put put the suction the domino's thing on the top of the lambo took the doors off went and bought a bunch of pizzas and we rode through downtown just handing out pizzas around lunchtime. Like, mm -hmm. yo, you want free pizza for lunch? Like just yeah. being stupid <laughs> and, yo, but, but so giving fun. back. Like yeah. it was fun. Cause people were like, oh my God, why do you not have doors on your Lamborghini? Yeah. And it's like, oh, cause we're the domino, you know, we're <laughs> slinging dominoes today. <laughs> um, so we did that and then, um, and then I ended up doing some donuts in a parking lot. Now, mind you, like we had already sent people ahead to mm -hmm. scope the parking lot, block yeah. it off, and set up the cameras. You was in Atlanta? Or no, you? it was actually up here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so, so we did. We didn't get a permit, but we took all safety precautions. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And so we did this and like, and then he posted it on his channel, got, it went viral, like, you know, got, got well over a million views. And um, about two weeks after he had posted it on his channel, not mine, uh, like five police officers show up, um, Yo, talking crazy. about we got warrants, blah, blah, blah. And I remember like I was in, I was back here and, and Danielle was like, Justin, there's a lot of police here. And I'm like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Like, I ain't got nothing to hide. I'm not running. Yeah. Like, I ain't doing nothing wrong. So yeah. what? we got we got these warrants for you. I'm mm -hmm. like, over a fucking Shot. YouTube video? Like, real talk. Like, I'm sorry. There's five of y'all here to arrest me for something you saw on a video. Um, that could or could not have been real. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a lot of... I think people want to want to believe everything they see on YouTube is real, but obviously we all do it to entertain the fans. Mm -hmm. So, although yes, some of it or most of it may be real and authentic, <laughs> it's there's editing involved. So anytime there's editing, I don't know if he sped it up or yeah. slowed it down or I don't know. I so, just know I'm the one who went to jail. <laughs> So how do you, like, what's your insurance like? Have your insurance ever dropped you? <laughs> no, <laughs> they haven't. And I, and you know, like in that case, I, I beat all those charges. Okay, okay, um, okay. I've got one of the best defense attorneys in the country. Okay, like, okay. Uh, shameless plug, but law offices of Matthew W. Kilgo. Okay. Um, and that's, that's my boy. Like he, he went to bat for me and, and actually it, it turned out to be a bigger deal here than we thought it was going to be because uh, Cherokee County had, that was the first like YouTube case mm -hmm. where they were going after a YouTuber um, <laughs> without hard evidence. Yeah. It was circumstantial evidence, yeah. you know. So again, like I can run through this shop and you get to editing it, you can make it look like I'm the fastest man yeah. with legs. Yep. Um, that's in the editing. Yeah. Um, so I think it, it became a really big case mm -hmm. in a perspective of if they were to convict me on those charges, they could go after every YouTuber on that mm -hmm. comes in their area. Yeah. Like, um, but because they didn't, it set a standard now of you better have your shit together before you go after somebody yep. uh, and really know your facts. And that's hard to do with YouTube, especially, you know, there's, when we film something, it doesn't give an exact location and an exact time and, yeah. it, it, you know, all that stuff isn't just saved there on the back end for them to see. So you have to prove when I did it, where I did it, what I did, was it actually me? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot that, that they just couldn't prove. Yeah. Um, and so with that being said, what's your thoughts on uh, Young Thug's lyrics been used against him in this Rico case? Uh, I think they'll have a, I think it's bullshit. Yeah. I mean, now I know Thug, mm -hmm. like I know him well. I rap, I've been rapping stuff for him like for a long time. Yep. Uh, so you'd be hard pressed to get me to say too much, <laughs> but I interact with those artists, um, all of them. And, and again, man, you have to understand that some of them are real, like really, really real. Mm -hmm. um, and and everything they say on the track, like mm -hmm. that shit come from real life experiences. Yeah. Um, at the same time, they're entertainers. Yeah. So, you know, even Dolph, like Dolph and I was the closest. Um, do I think Dolph was out smashing bitches every weekend? Mm -hmm. No, I know he wasn't. Like, I know the man too well. Okay, like, yeah. he wasn't hanging out with a bunch of young folks. He wasn't. He didn't really care about going in the club and shit. It was all about making music. Now, did he? Yeah. Did Did he have some fun? And like, of course he did. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did he do some shit? Of course he did. But, but was that all real? I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah I, I see. He that. was one of the realest ones. Ever. And like, so how did you meet Young Dolph? Uh, through Rollo. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know. Yeah, I know who Rollo is. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So Rollo, um, 
at that time like was coming up in music but was running the bluffs and mm -hmm. and Rollo and I really hit it off. Um, we met through another customer, a friend of mine, and <clears throat> and um, there was a situation with the very first car. I never said nothing. I kept my mouth shut. Like I could sell TMZ a movie, like <laughs> real talk. Like if I was willing to talk or tell the stories, yeah. I could sell a movie. Um, <laughs> but I'm not, I yeah, won't. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what got me that street credit of mm -hmm. like, all right, like homeboy ain't gonna say shit. Yeah. It, it's just, I don't know what's in that car. It ain't my responsibility. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, um, and so Rollo and I hit it off and he was, he was running the bluffs like hard then. So it was, it was kind of weird. Like they would, I did. I actually did a video where I'm in the video with him um, in the bluffs. But like, we were so cool that at that time, like, I I drive the Lambo down to the bluffs at midnight, like, oh, shit. And and okay. everybody, okay. like, if you did say some shit out of line to me, mm -hmm. you they were probably gonna get fucked up more than me, because um, I just had that level of respect. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and I had earned it, but. Uh, but anyways, Rollo and I were really cool, and so Rollo introduced me to Dolph, and it was just like right then, like, oh, white boy in the bluffs in the middle of the night, like... In a Lamborghini? In a Lamborghini, <laughs> and he riding out in it. He cool. So, like, you know, so Dolph and I just instantly had, I instantly had street credit yep. with Dolph because mm -hmm. of the other customers that I had. And um, and so I did I did his Ferrari in a custom orange chrome, and um, and it was like I forget it was like a Wednesday or Thursday, but I had the Ferrari and I had just got it done that day, and Dolph hit me like, "Yo, I got to go do this show, blah blah blah." Like I really want to take the car. I'm like, man, I just got it done. Like, leave it with me this weekend. Like, <laughs> please take, you know, take something else. And, um, and thank God they did. That was when, uh, when, when they got shot at a hundred times. So that was oh, wow. right before he did Bulletproof. And um, if he would have been in the Rari, we would have lost Dolph a long time ago. Um, yeah. His initial plan was to go to the show in the Ferrari, leave in the Ferrari. Um, thank God he was in the Bulletproof Tahoe. Like, or escalate whatever wow, it was. So thank you for not being done. Right. Well, <laughs> and, and it was done, but it was one of those things like, hey man, just just let it sit here over the weekend. So mm -hmm. if something's gonna lift or or have an issue, you know, and, and um and we laughed about it afterwards, like you know, glad I did yeah. <laughs> glad I didn't give you the car. Yeah. Your yeah. own car. Yeah. Um but <laughs> that he knew was done, but um, but after that, like that just, I don't know, man, like Dolph and I, that solidified it all. Like that was, how was he as a person? Man, one of the, one of the most influential down to earth, real people I've ever been friends with. Like it, it was, and we didn't always get along. Like, I, I think that was the biggest shock for me. So mm -hmm. like. Dolph was very, very, very real. Um, and the, the things he would say, I think most people couldn't really comprehend the true meaning behind what he was saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I even listened to his, obviously we listen to his music every day. Um, and I think mm -hmm. I have a different perspective of it than most people do. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like I know what he's trying to tell people. We were in the middle of doing the camo cars and uh, so he came in one day like something wasn't the way he wanted or whatever, whatever. But I remember him and I getting into a heated ass argument in the showroom. Like, mm -hmm. like he was way taller than me, so I had to look up <laughs> at his ass. But like, he looking down at me yelling, I'm looking up at him yelling, "Fuck you, blah blah blah," you know, blah, whatever, whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, get, get the fuck out of my shop. Mm -hmm. and he, whatever. Like, so we had this big ass blowout and. I remember looking at Danielle that day and was like, shit's over, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, 
we're done. I ain't never gonna hear from him again, blah, blah, blah. And this motherfucker called me and woke me up the next morning at like <laughs> 8 a.m. See his name on my phone, I'm like, man. And so what? Oh shit, no, chill, what, what are we doing today? <laughs> motherfucker, did you miss yesterday? Like, you know we just had a big ass fight. I told you get fuck out my shop. Yeah. You yelling at me, I'm yelling at you. And now you waking me up the next morning like, what we doing today? Yeah, bro, I told you, like, I love you, I love you forever. Like, yeah. we're gonna have some disagreements. And that was it, like, that was a real moment for me of like, we're more than just friends and customers. Like, mm -hmm. we really fucking family. Like, yeah. Yeah. we're gonna have some fights, we're gonna disagree, and that's okay. I can be me, I can express my feelings, you can express yours, personal or business. But at the end of the day, like, we all in it for the same thing and and there's so much love there that like no one disagreement was ever five disagreements it wasn't ever gonna be the end like we were just we were fam for life like real talk and and speaking of jail so <laughs> so that same that same time I went to jail for dance shit on the YouTube they were filming a video on the south side of Atlanta with Gucci. So, so I was locked up. I, Dolph had his Rari on set. Y'all might remember it was, cause one of the videos went viral. They had some strippers out in the, in the driveway and one of them like fell on her head. I don't oh yeah, know. I think that yeah. was so yeah, yeah, exactly. It was hilarious, <laughs> yeah. it's like it's straight up. Uh, so that video shoot, I was supposed to be there. Dolph had called and called. Danielle answered, you know, like, hey, sorry, Dolph, like, he in jail, and this is what happened, and Dolph was like, cool, I'm on the way, where, where I need to go to get him. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, things yeah. like that was like, damn, we, we're that cool. Well, like, yeah. that, that's, that was a real eye-opener of like, like, we, we really are family. Like, um, it, it was, and you know, like I, I got a charm for free bands. Like I really started with Future and, and still got all the love and respect in the world for him too. But, um, but just Dolph did for me what, what no other artist in Atlanta has ever done, uh, or I think ever can. Like, like what Dolph and I did with the camo was so, it was such a big movement, man. I don't know that it can ever be duplicated or or yeah. and so the idea of, from the camo was it your original idea was it his or it came together and then you guys decided to do the camo it came together man so uh so like i said i'd already done Dolph's rari and we had a relationship and and i had done a few other cars for him um but when he was recording major he hit me up like yo come down to the studio i want to talk to you like we're gonna do some shit and <laughs> And so I went down to street execs and we were just, honestly, we were just smoking L's and, and kicking it in the studio and, mm -hmm. and I was listening to shit that y'all would hear a year later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and so this whole time he's like, man, I want to, you know, back then this was like late 17. Mm -hmm. um, but then like the big move was all these dudes in Dubai were posting, posting up pictures of like cars and driveways. There'd be a fleet of them all chrome, you mm -hmm. know, gold chrome, whatever it be. Mm -hmm. But like most of that shit was over in Dubai and, mm -hmm. and that, was, that was the big move for a fleet of cars. And Dolph, Dolph had a vision like, yo, I, I wanna do something with my cars that's just so over the top of, of what these dudes over here are doing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and we went back and forth for probably a month or more, like, and, and me, like, man, I don't, I don't know what Dolph, I don't know the answer, like, these, this dude over in Dubai got 10 cars in the driveway that are all gold chrome, like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how we're going to top that, bro, like, <laughs> there's only, they only make these materials, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and, and we don't print, so, um, so he wanted something. <clears throat> that was authentic to him and that was one of one mm -hmm. uh, that nobody had done before. 
and that's that's a tall order like that's that's a challenge yeah. um and so there was a lot of like us going back and forth and just kicking it and running different ideas and and one of his favorite colors was green um but something that kept sticking out in my mind like every time i'd be at the studio um uh, or be around him or we talk about it he always used the word major like at that time it was like bro this shit gonna be so major and i'm like man shut up like <laughs> I, I get it i get it this shit gotta be big but nah bro like major it's gonna be fucking major and <laughs> and so we kept on and kept on i'm like bro shit, shit camo then go to war with these motherfuckers <laughs> like if that's what you wanted to do we're gonna go to war, let's go to war, let's dress up for war. And then it kinda, we started looking at camos and different things. And um, ironically, like, honestly, I just put this shit together in my head, like probably, uh, probably like two or three weeks ago, cause we were talking about Dolph and, and somebody asked like, how did I do camo before Dolph? And I did. So I had a basketball player um, back like late 16, early 17, that had me do a Z06 and snow camo. And that was the first one I had ever done mm -hmm. by myself, you know. I didn't associate it with Dolph at the time. Yeah. All these years, I didn't associate it with Dolph at all. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were looking through like old pictures mm -hmm. Dolph's orange Rari was at my other shop, like the mid, uh, we call it the middle shop. I've had three buildings, mm -hmm. um, but Dolph pick, picked up his orange car when that snow camo Z06 was at my shop. Oh, wow. So again, I didn't realize till recently, mm -hmm. I think like he probably got a little bit of that idea um, from seeing the Corvette unconsciously in his head. Mm -hmm from seeing that Corvette when he, when he picked up his Rari. Um, That's incredible. And, and so again, him and I kind of, you know, go back and forth and, and we're like, all right, let's do camo. And so we looked at all the camo stuff, like obviously like anyone else, we Google camo wrap, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and I'm not saying I'm the first one to ever do camo. I'm not like there have, there was plenty of stuff that was printed like little small prints of camo and different colors, whatever. Um, but it all looked, it just looked whack. Like it wasn't, it, it, it was just patterns, repetition, uh, repetitive patterns. And, um, and Sadolf was like, look, bro, this is what I want, but I want you to blow it up and make this shit like larger than life. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and make these pattern, make it fit on the car. Like these little shapes, these little patterns, it shit don't look right. Like I want something. Some like, major. Some major. <laughs> I want it major and, and, and make it big. And, uh, and so I came back, you know, and like put all these colors together. And there was one color that, that we were missing and nobody offered it. So, um, so I literally like I had it made. Mm -hmm. um, I took, I can't tell you the recipe, but I took some shit and I made a color, <laughs> right? And when I made that color, it although it was the smallest amount of color used on the car, it, it completed it. Dolph it hit me, and I had I had all the colors together, like, and I had the vision in my head, but. I'm not a graphic guy, so like I can't get on the computer and give you a proof. Yeah, it, it's just it's up here, and I can do it. But mm -hmm. anyway, so Dolph hit me and was like, "Yo, I want you to come pick up my G wagon and the Ray, and um, and go ahead and do them." You know. Mm -hmm. So I went down. I took Danielle, my wife. We go down to Atlanta. I'm supposed to meet him at Atlantic Station. I get there and I'm, like he ain't there. All right, well, I know he's gonna be late. Like, he's always late, mm -hmm. I get it, whatever. But like an hour passed, I'm texting him, calling, he ain't answering and shit, ain't replying, so I'm like, man, he, he on some bullshit. Whatever it is, like, mm -hmm. we're out, you mm -hmm. know? So I jump on the interstate, I'll get on 400, I'm riding back home, you know, I get a call from him, like, yo, I just pulled up, where you at? 
Like, bro, you two hours late, man. Where the fuck you think I'm at? I'm on my way home, bro. No, nah, man, turn around. I looked at Danielle. I'm like, I don't even want to turn around. Like, I bet he ain't even there. Like, we turn around, go back down there. He ain't there. Like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but like, I ain't got the time for this shit. Yeah. So we were this close to never turn, like, mm -hmm. literally, Danielle was like, he been good to us, he, you know, that's yeah. Rollo boy, like, yeah. well, let's turn around, give him the benefit of the doubt. And could you imagine if we didn't? Exactly. Like, if I wouldn't have turned around and went back down yeah. to the city, like. None, none of the cards would have been in the, in the video. Major, what may not have even been major. <laughs> like real talk i mean i'm not taking credit no, for no, that but, it, 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 but i'm saying aesthetics. and 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 me and sleepy cuz talked about it like uh because we just filmed love for the streets so like we all got together and and we shut the shop down we had all pre here and and mm -hmm. the fam and and me and cuz were talking about it then he was with Dolph that night and like i was telling him that story because i don't think we ever really talked about it and uh and Cuz was like, man, like we'd have had to rewrite history if that shit wouldn't have happened. Like, yeah. it just wouldn't have been the same. Even if somebody else would have done it, their vision of camo and my vision of camo and how I made it flow with the cars and how somebody else would have made it. Like, people have tried to mimic it, mm -hmm. you know? And the shit, that. most people can look at a car and go, that's ACW, yep. that's some fake shit. Yep. Like, <laughs> you know? made a special color. Um, exactly i did i did and even it and now there's a color that's close to it so people can get close and try but the way we do the camo is all by hand with knifeless tape so i can't do two cars identical like it they're always going to be a little mm -hmm. little bit different here or there okay. um and that was the whole point it was like we want some shit that's one of one so um but we wanted each car to be one of one but when you see them all, you know good and damn well mm -hmm. they're all together or they're all, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so they had consistency, but inconsistencies. And, and that was a challenge from a design perspective. Yep. So yeah, man, it was, it was challenging from a design perspective, but it was also extremely fun. And, um, and looking back, like the money I've made off of it and, and all that it's done for us has been dramatic, like just drastic, you know, life-changing. So how does that, uh, so because that split second decision of going or, or leaving changed like, like the course of like the everything. The trajectory of my so, entire life. Yeah, so, so as far as in the decisions you made after that, how did that affect the way you made decisions? Uh, I don't like. I, Are I, you now more open-minded before, like now, or or it's kind of like? I don't think it's any different now, man. Like, I've I've always, um, I'm always looking for an opportunity mm -hmm. and and to capitalize on each opportunity, but I really just go through life trying to do the right thing and do right by everyone. Like, mm -hmm. it don't matter who you are or what level you're on, um, you just do right. Like, yeah. do right by folk. Like, yeah. don't don't play with people's money. Don't say you're gonna do something you can't do. Mm -hmm. Don't say you're gonna be here and not be there. You know, like, and if somebody running late or something happens, like, instead of having that fuck you attitude, like, be open-minded. Like, I don't know what's going on in that man's life. Maybe he has something way more important come up, mm -hmm. but like, you know, I it was just, you just do the right thing. Yeah, and sure. and then I feel like if you do that enough, like the right opportunities present themselves for you to capitalize on. And, um, and you know, even with the Dolph stuff, like one of the last, the last time I saw him face to face was here in the shop and we're smoking, chilling. It was me, him, Cuz, and, and my lead guy, Brian. And we're all talking about about major and about the camo and this and that. And Dolph was like, you know, real talk outside of me and the album, you did more with this shit than anybody else. Like wow. anyone else, you made more off of it. You did more off of it. And, and my reply to that was thank you. Like, thank you so much. 
I'm forever indebted to you for what you've done for me and my family. And, and his, re his response to that was, I didn't do shit for you. I gave you traction. Like, all I did was give you an opportunity and some traction. Yeah. What you did with it was on you, so, so that's on you. And, and that meant a lot to me. Like, that was real. He, that's what he did. He gave me traction. Like, he gave me an opportunity to show my design and, and my vision of, of what he wanted. And, and so I think it was a real mix of both of us together going, what do we do? I kind of feel this. I'm feeling that. Like, and we came together, and now the whole fucking world wears camo every day. And, That's incredible. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's and, amazing. <laughs> and so we, we changed everything from car culture to fashion. You know, um, oh, you have a clothing line too, don't you? No, well, I do some of my own stuff, but but my point, what I was getting at, like when I did those cars, when we decided we were doing them in camo, like I went to stores and tried to find camo apparel and things like that to get inspiration off of. Yeah. You couldn't find that shit. There wasn't nothing at the mall, none of these stores. Like you wasn't finding camo shirts. You had to go to like some hunting website. Yeah and get some real tree or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. after the car shit came out, like a year after, it was like camo every everywhere. store in the mall got camo. They putting this shit on shoes, shirts, yeah. hats, like everything. So, so I like, yeah. and Dolph and I used to joke about it, but we changed the fashion industry with the car industry um, and, and, and set, man, it was just a worldwide movement and it's still going. Like, like real talk, it is still going. I don't care where you are in the world. You see our camo, you say doll for your ACW. Like, yeah. that's just real talk. Um, and it don't matter who did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so, so it's been a huge blessing and honor. And, and still to this day, like, I think one big misconception people have is, uh, is that we did it for the money and and uh, it was never about the money. It was, it was about a, for me, even back then, it wasn't about money in the beginning. It was about like, I want to put my vision on these cars yes. and, and like, I want to make these cars cool and, and whatnot. And so, um, so I did that shit out of passion, not, not financial. Um, yeah. I think that's the biggest misconception. And, yeah. and still to this day, you know, when we do these camo wraps, we make donations back to the family. So, mm -hmm. uh, and real, you know, real talk, I don't think his kids' kids can spend the money he's made. But, but regardless, it's the principle of, yeah. of that family's given us huh. so much love. We still, to, to this day, give back. That's great. So that's the amazing. Young's Off package, when they get that, that goes, mm -hmm. some of the portion does go yes. back to the family. Yes. Oh. Absolutely, straight to the family. Uh, and one of, you know, even this year, like one of, one of my most memorable moments of the year was Trey Trey calling me on Christmas, telling me thank you and Merry Christmas. And like, I still, like I, I talk to him on a weekly basis. Like, that's, awesome. that's, that's again, we're family for life. Like yeah. that shit, whether he's here or not, uh, no, you're doing a great job carrying so on his he, legs. Even, like, we like gotta, I had the date tattooed on my arm, bro, so like. <laughs> we got to cut it short. We got to yeah, cut it short. Man. But we appreciate the interview. Yeah, uh, really, the opportunity. And Anytime, thank you for telling man. the stories thank that you both. nobody thank else you, man. have heard. Absolutely. I hope, it, I hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>